Act of Zimbabwe and also the guidelines of SADC. So whatever happens in the election, what we observe has to be qualified by the what the Constitution of Zimbabwe says. That's why our document, more than any other document, and the reason it's being challenged or fought is because it's, it can't be fought. Every issue we have raised in this election is supported by either a broken constitutional provision or an overlooked electoral act or by an abused uh, guideline of the SADC. So we have no interest to go outside our mandate. So basically when you read our report, everything we have raised is supported either by the Constitution of Zimbabwe, it is supported by the Electoral Act of Zimbabwe, and it is also undergirded by the commitment that Zimbabwe has made to SADC as a member state and have agreed to be scrutinized on the basis of the guidelines that even Zimbabwe was part of in formulating. Yeah, and I'm happy you used the words, Dr. Mumba, that your observance of these elections were based on a broken constitutional provision, and that is, of course, your main critique here. If you were to give us your top three broken constitutional provisions as you observed these elections and i'll tell you in a moment why i would like for you to just give us a sense almost in bullet point form three key provisions of the constitution of zimbabwe that were broken in your observance of these elections well first of all um i think it is important for us to look at issues for instance uh, of the uh, revelation or release of the voters' roll. Uh, the Constitution is extremely clear that the voters' roll must be, must be uh, availed to the stakeholders in a timely manner so that they are able to go through and analyze it and be able to do any kind of audit they want to do. Obviously, that was not done. Mm. I may not be able to take you all to the constitutional provisions because that is done this is not done by me alone this is done by a set of lawyers that are part of our team and judges that are part of our team and then we have drafters of the of the statement and then you have the head of mission who actually only reads out the statement and that is why it is a laughable matter that we have heard our colleagues start to raise a voice against the head of mission and he's the one they are scandalizing he's the one they are calling names the head of mission is the least in terms of being part of the process. And the process, I'll come back to the question you've asked, because I think I need to put this one on, 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 you know, on the table. The process of preparing a preliminary statement begins with us as a team interviewing all the stakeholders that we can lay hands on. And we did interview political parties, both opposition and, and the ruling. We went to President Nangagwa and had a session with him. We went to the headquarters of P yeah, Zanu PF and had a conversation with the PF Secretary General and his team. We called uh, President Chamisa of CCC with his team. They came to our offices and we interviewed them. We went to the uh, government officials like Attorney General. We interviewed him for the security issues. We interviewed this, the, 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 the Commissioner of Police and asked him questions, and we're collecting all that information. Civil society, the chief, the church, also came in and gave their side of the story. Yeah. Then we sent out, our, just a moment, then we sent out our observers in the 10 provinces, and there they started to feed us with the information they're receiving from the 10 provinces, and then the drafters draft the statement. And once they draft the statement, the whole team sits down to make sure it's fully verified and in line with within the allowable limits of making sure that we only look at the Constitution of Zimbabwe, at the Electoral Act, and we also look at the guidelines of SADC. And once that is done, then they hand me the speech and ask me to see whether I'm in agreement with it or if there's any adjustment I want to make. And when I looked at the speech, it was so professionally and scientifically done that it was difficult for me to change it because I think it was based on the information that we were receiving and they, they did not add anything. So that's how that evolved. So when you talk about the constitutional provisions on the voters' role, 
we quoted a, a constitutional provision and we'll make available to you uh, our statement, uh, which also immediately co you know, um, has the, the provisions in it. All right. The freedom of speech and, and association also is ba backed up by a, 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 a provision of the Constitution. So we will make this available to you because I don't have it offhand. Uh, it is something that you know, has been put in there to make sure they buttress the statements that we have made. All right. Dr. Mumba, let's conclude our conversation because fundamentally what I have to ask you now, and I'm hoping that you can respond with your most simplest and honest answer you can, and that is that do you believe, as the SADC Observer Mission, that these elections were free, fair, and importantly, credible? Well, that is a question we don't usually answer easily. Um, and I think that in our statement, we put it a little bit differently. And look, our goal is to authenticate the process. If the process is flawed, then the result cannot be legitimate. But the manner in which we couched our our, 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 um, our conclusion is as follows, and I think I would like to end at this, because then you are able to deduce on how we view this election as Saudi. Mm. We said in our conclusion that in conclusion, the mission observed that the pre-election and voting phases on 23rd, 24th August 2023 harmonized elections were peaceful and calm. However, for reasons outlined above, the mission noted that some aspects of the harmonized elections fell short of the requirements of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, the Electoral Act, and the Sadiq principles and guidelines governing democratic elections as of 2021. So basically that is our position at this time. We are now working on our final report uh, that is going to be even more uh, clearer in terms of how we are going to investigate all the other issues that are in this report in our making of the final report. Dr. Mumba, I'm letting you go, but I'm obviously not, uh, not happy with, uh, with what you've given me as the final answer. But you mentioned that your observation of this election is already, and to use your words, it's already being scandalized, and you are saying that it is laughable, therefore, I'm wondering what your recommendations will be to the SADC Troika, because that's the body that you report to within the SADC. What would your recommendations be if indeed you conclude that these elections were not above board? Well, first of all, they announced the results on Saturday night complicates the situation in terms of the recommendations we can make. What now needs to happen is for those who are aggrieved about this election to proceed to the courts, but also to ensure that Troika engages the Zimbabwean government to look at this report. It raises very serious issues that actually border on the credibility and the integrity of the last election. And I think that as we hand over this report to the chairman, uh, President Hakainde Chilema of the Troika, he is going to communicate with his colleagues of, of SADC and say these are the serious um, matters that were raised by our, our team in Zimbabwe. And I think President Nagagwa will have to be allowed to respond to these issues. And after that, they are going to have to decide how we proceed or how they proceed in terms of this election. But we did observe some very, very serious, serious um, omissions of what was supposed to be done and I think that our job is to observe and to report and we've done exactly that we observed and reported without fear or favor and we are glad that we're professional about it Dr. Nevers Mumba thank you very much for your time the head of the observer mission the SADC observer mission in Zimbabwe those words those final words from Dr. Mumba, perhaps uh, that illuminates what could potentially be a final report. He says, serious issues that border on the credibility of this election. That is what we are probably 
going to have to walk away with from that uh, interview.